I am very lucky to get a chance to speak with Dan Stagner. He is the vehicle synthesis manager for Ram and Dan, what does that mean exactly? Well, I get to I get to see the program from the very first truck to this launching uh, launching edition that you're driving now. Okay, very good. In 2024, the Hemi V8 was in the Ram truck. In 2025, it was gone. In 2026, it's back again. At first glance, it seems like an easy project. It, after all, is the same 5.7 liter Hemi V8. Still makes 395 horsepower, 410 pound-feet of torque, but that is not actually the case. When the Hemi left in 2025, a lot of work went to integrate these new engines into the Ram. Putting it back was a challenge, and Dan, you're going to help us understand what those challenges were, because clearly it wasn't packaging. It physically fits under the hood, there's plenty of room in the engine bay. So what were the challenges of putting the Hemi into the 2026 Ram? Well, like you said, the, the, the engine actually bolted right back in, but there, are the, the electrical architecture of the 25 was upgraded such that uh, we had better bandwidth for the CAN network, faster speeds, and uh, more security. <clears throat> so all of the modules on the vehicle uh, that interact with the engine had to be recalibrated, you know, reconfigured, uh, new messages, all of these kind of things uh, had to be reintegrated and matched to, to, to the Hemi engine. So if I could summarize, <clears throat> tell me if I get this right. The, when the Ram, when the Hemi left the Ram, mm -hmm. all the computers spoke one language. Mm -hmm. When the Ram came back, they spoke a different language. Correct. And you had to teach the Hemi this new language. Essentially, yes. <laughs> and, and so that means physically putting it in, you don't have to worry about crash tests and those things much. And we, we did do some, uh, some uh, verification. Crash okay. Testing. Okay. Um, we, I mean, this was a, a true full development program. We, okay. We did actually go through all of the steps you'd bring uh, a vehicle back to production with. Okay. So, but the primary or the biggest challenge was all of the electrical uh, integration. Were there any unexpected hiccups from that integration? Um, were there any <coughs> challenges with the new language that made it harder for the Hemi to operate? No, uh, not really. I mean, it was, it was uh, you know, we built a vehicle right out of the gate in January. We got right to work and uh, uh, put together a, a concept vehicle. And really it was used to kind of flesh out some of those uh, where the integration was needed, okay. <laughs> essentially. But flushing out the issues and, and getting, a, getting the real scope of the program out in front of us. Were there any advantages with the new languages? Because, you know, I've, I've driven... I've driven the 26 uh, Ram a little bit, and already I'm going to drive it some more soon. And it did seem to operate as smoothly as ever. Obviously, uh, talked with the transmission. We were getting quick, good quick shifts from the transmission and everything else. So everything behaved as well, if not better, than I remember. So I'm wondering if this new language brought any advantages. Uh, I mean, feature content is an advantage. Um, the active what, what does that mean exactly? Feature content. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, well, because when you when I think feature content, my head instantly goes to the you know center display, the touch screen, yeah. and like, oh, we've got Alexa now, or you know, Apple CarPlay's wireless, or whatever. So like, when you say feature, and we're talking about an engine, what does that mean? It, it's it's more than just the engine. It's the um, like active driving feature, mm, the, the driving aids, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. The, the uh, the brake system module again it it, it kind of does a uh, it manages traction control and manages the uh, regenerative braking with the okay. engine um, all of these things you know having uh, uh, faster communications always better and that's another good point you guys had to do slip controls all over again because I know um, from my experience that um, managing torque is a big part of traction control and stability control. Um, so if you're dealing with torque from a Hemi versus torque from an inline six hurricane, that would be new, new brake controls then. 
Absolutely. It's a, it was a new brake uh, module in, in 25. And all of that had to be, all that work that was done on the Hurricane engines on the 3.6 uh, also had to be done on the Hemi. Um, just uh, making sure that uh, the engine re would respond to the, to the commands from the brake system module. Yep, yep. Things like that. Now to the fun stuff. You had 395 horsepower in 24, 410 pound-feet of torque. 395 in 26, 410 pound-feet of torque. Why not crank it up a little bit and give us a little bit more power as a reward for having to sit out a year? <laughs> oh, uh, you know, it's it's a tried and true engine. We were confident in the durability of the of the engine hardware itself. Um, the customers wanted it back. We wanted to deliver it in the fastest timeline possible. Had we had more time, you know, this it, it could have been a, a discussion, but. Um, we were very focused on getting it back into the market as fast as possible. And that segues beautifully. Thank you for that, Dan. <laughs> Playing with and offering this 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. What were the, I suppose, risks with having the Hemi back and offering that new powertrain warranty? I, I don't believe there was any risk in that. Okay. It was, it was really. Um, providing that extra extra value to the customer you know the uh, trucks get more expensive every year it seems uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, you know having that value of the of the hemi the hemi is only twelve hundred dollars more yeah over the so uh, hurricane engine and that's the standard output hurricane engine correct which is the lower of the two offered and what is that it's a 420 468 420 horsepower, 468 pound-feet of torque, oh, if I'm remembering correctly. I'll, I'll put the correct number up on the screen, but I think that's it. So, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a value equation. You know, okay. Making sure that the customers have a, have a good warranty with, uh, with a good product. And there was no worry about, like, oh, we better put a different weight oil in no. the Hemi now, or we better turn this down a little bit. Or yeah, We have a lot of confidence in this engine. It's okay. been in production since uh, 2009. Or sorry, yeah, 2009. Wow, uh, and you know, I, I was I was there for the launch of that too. So, <laughs> so there is obviously the noise is a big part of this engine. The one other thing that I did notice when I was driving it is there is that just extra linearity to power buildup. Naturally aspirated engine, so there's no spinning up turbos even though that's really well managed these days. So you get that just real nice crisp buildup of power. It's obvious with the shifts, a nice crisp delivery after the shift occurs. There is a subtle driving feel improvement to this engine. Do you think that A, that's a fair assessment and B, do you personally put value in that? Absolutely, everything from the pedal calibration how the gain of how how much uh torque you get the throttle you, map right yeah. exactly yeah um the linearity of the the exhaust note i mean you'll you'll feel that build up the same way that the torque feels um induction system goes into that impression that you get when you're driving mm -hmm. uh, all of that is a very you know very indicative of of a naturally aspirated engine but uh, we accentuate we we uh, focused on the linearity of the exhaust. You know, I was involved in the uh, the beginnings of the induction system uh, tuning that we did. So it's it all goes into to one package. It's all integrated. Together. Okay, and it is it it's it's the GT exhaust that's now standard equipment on this Hemi V8, and that that is basically a louder throaty exhaust throatier exhaust. Yeah. It's single exhaust through past the cat, and then it splits to dual tips around the rear axle. So yeah, it's a three inch feed to three the muffler inch. actually. Okay. And then after that, it splits to both sides of the bumper. Uh, aesthetics, sound, it, it, you know, all of those things go into, uh, come into play here. And it, the the decision was made at the highest levels to to bring back that as the only option, the, the sport tuned exhaust mm -hmm. or that full V8 experience for the customers that they want. Right, right, if you want the V8, you're gonna get the V8 and you're gonna hear it. Yep. So basically what we're what you're saying is that, that 
um, getting this engine in in the in the short timeline that it was was really a crash course in just getting all the ancillary systems around the engine to talk with the engine and talk properly and that was a real challenge um, and I, I will say personally I, I do really love the Hurricane engine. I think that's a great engine. I love the inline six configurations of engines generally, but it does feel right to have a V8 in a full size pickup truck. So I appreciate that the work was done and I appreciate you giving us a little bit more understanding of why it was a lot of work. And let me just close by saying that I for one hope that now that the Hemi is back, that it is actually gonna stay with us for a while. Dan, thank you so much. Thank you.